Um, twenty thousand. The exemption is twenty thousand two hundred dollars. That means that of the money she's receiving, right. she, she gets to keep the first twenty thousand two hundred. The trustee would be entitled to the balance to satisfy the creditors. So, so the seventy nine thousand eight hundred left over from her hundred thousand dollar claim right. goes well, there. Just when somebody comes in, and Susan, I'm sure you do the same thing because we have a procedure in our office for doing this. We tell people, look, to do this, you can't have too much equity in your house. Mm -hmm. There's what we call exemptions. So when somebody comes in and they want to say do a Chapter Seven, we generally make a list and we say, look, this is what we need to know. We need the you know last statement from each creditor. We're going to need some tax returns and pay stubs and your monthly expenses, and we're going to need to see what your house is worth, like a fair market analysis by a realtor compared to your mortgages. And you're only entitled to each individual a husband and wife, $20,200 in exemptions. That means that they could have the first 20200 each, so that would be $40,400 mm -hmm. that they would be entitled to keep in a bankruptcy. So say that they had $100,000 in equity in their house. Would they qualify, Susan? Would you say, go ahead, or would we be putting them at risk of having that house sold? I think we'd be putting yeah, them we'd be putting them at risk. risk. You know, so you got to be careful when you're doing this. You've got to evaluate not only houses, but cars. The exemption of, for, for a car, um, I believe, at this point, is $3,225. $3,225. So you could have a car that has equity of $3,225 or a value of $3,225. Um, pension benefits, uh, anything covered under ERISA, retirement mm -hmm. funds, tax deferred vehicles are, are exempt, 100% exempt. Okay, so, so just there, to that's be, a protected asset. Just to be clear about that, that means that although each individual has twenty thousand two hundred dollars as their threshold, in if equity. I have a hundred thousand dollars in, say, a four hundred one k, an IRA, a pension benefit, that's not going to be calculated. No, in this. that's actually going to be that's exempt, which is, I think it's a good thing because right. people who are saving for retirement aren't going to be burdened with all the debt which would offset that retirement money. Mm -hmm. It truly is. I mean, it truly is. It's a good law, and it really helps people get out from under and get a fresh start. And, and you know something? The, the, um, the new act um, really is designed to prevent abuse because there was a lot of abuse. And, um, and it's unfortunate that there were people out there who we called them serial filers. They would just file, like, you know, they're in foreclosure and they would just keep filing bankruptcy petitions to stop the sheriff's sale so they right. could stay in their house a couple more months. So, you know, it stopped things like that. It stopped, um, you know, tenants from filing bankruptcy to get out of paying their rent. The landlord now could, you know, throw them out without having to worry about them being in bankruptcy. Um, there's a lot, of, a, a lot of neat little provisions in the law that really uh, protect um, creditors. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, the creditors in their lobby were behind this new law, but I think it's it's good, and I think it's good because I think it creates a culture of responsibility uh, for individuals. You got to take responsibility for your finances. Well, when you when you spoke about serial filers, mm -hmm. if there's someone watching the program now and they say, you know, I filed back in '80, I can't do it again. Can you file twice, three times, oh. five times? What, what's the rule? You, yes, you can you file can, more than one bankruptcy. You could. Um, I think what Chris is referring to, not to avert the question right off the bat, a serial filer is somebody, as he said, bankruptcy, if you file for bankruptcy, any other litigation that you may have pending mm -hmm. is what they consider automatically stayed or stopped at that point right. while the bankruptcy is addressed. Right. And then in order for that proceeding that was filed that's a non-bankruptcy, the person who filed the claim in the other court actually has to go to the bankruptcy court and say, I want to be able to proceed with my litigation, and they get what's called um, a removal from they, the automatic right. stay. They lift the or automatic, they lift stay, the automatic yes. stay. And primarily one of the things you'll see is somebody's in foreclosure with their house, and they're two weeks from the sheriff's sale. They've exhausted their remedies for adjournments, so they r would rush to file a bankruptcy petition. And then just the so they could stay, in. because then the sheriff couldn't sell the house until the bankruptcy was adjudicated, or they got the right. um, relief from the automatic stay. So that's what Chris is referring to about these serial fires filers, every time something would happen, they'd run and file bankruptcy right. 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 just to stop this, and then usually the person who f filed the action that's non-commercial, non-bank, uh, non-collection agency might just let the lawsuit slide until it was dismissed by the court for lack of prosecution, and then they'd let the bankruptcy, they'd withdraw it or have it um, uh, declared to be non-pros, or the lack of prosecution, and the court would dismiss it because they didn't file the remainder of the paperwork. 
That's what I think he means by serial filers. Okay. Yeah, but you, but you, you can't do that anymore. Chapter seven, you can only do it once every eight years. Once every eight years. Yeah, it used to be once every six years. Yes. Chapter thirteen, you can do every four years. Chapter thirteen is a little different because chapter thirteen lasts for three to five years. You know, three years or a five-year plan. So you don't really get a discharge order until the end. It's, and you've made monthly payments for all that time. The processes um, for both for both of them um, require generally a trip. In the northern part of the state, you wind up going down to Newark, and the trustees involved, and they'll evaluate whether or not you know you're a serial filer or if you filed. And right on the petition, you have to disclose whether you have or have not filed in the last eight years or mm -hmm. four years. And there's a, a system now; it's called Pacer. We have it in our office that tracks from the computer tracks all the bankruptcy filing. So we can find out if somebody comes in, and I've had this happen. And I ask them, oh yeah, when was the you know, have you ever filed before? Oh yeah, we filed, uh, you know, 15 years ago. So, you, you know, you run it, and sure enough, they just filed like a couple of years ago, but it was dismissed. So you could run into problems like that. You right. could do a lot of work, and, and people need to know that, you know, for Chapter 7, a liquidation, eight years. For Chapter 13, four years. And, you know, when, when you, you say eight years and four years, unless if it has, if you file, but it doesn't go through, it's been dismissed. Then the time doesn't start ticking, correct? It, well, you know, it's it says in the in the rule when you uh, file, it says, and, and I and I uh, I could be uh, misspeaking, but I'll have to check it. I'm pretty sure it's from the discharge. From the discharge. So so and and I'll have to check the rule, but I'm pretty sure it's eight years from the discharge. Um, and when you when you look at that, if, if somebody shouldn't be penalized, at least in my opinion, if they do file and it just doesn't work out, right? And it's it's dismissed for some reason. They should be able to file, but uh, I'm pretty sure the rules require there may be a 180-day waiting period. Um, uh, there's some very specific rules in the new in the new code uh, with regard to the amount of times that you uh, can file, you know, within that eight-year period before you become a serial filer, you know. But you know the the provisions, the automatic stay provision of the bankruptcy code, um, it doesn't have the t the, the type of um, Protections that it used to have for for um, the standard debtor, um, the creditors have a lot more rights these days. Uh, I, I mentioned the, the landlord, right. and I, I mentioned the mortgage companies. Now they're getting the stay lifted a lot faster, uh, and uh, and the stay doesn't apply uh, in, in a lot of circumstances where it, it used to apply. We only have a few minutes left, so this is going to be my quick fire. Throw out a few questions, yes, no answers, or as, as sure as they could be. If a husband files, does that mean the wife must file? No. 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 Uh, can a business file or only people, individuals, allowed to file? No, businesses are allowed to file. And uh, this may be a little bit of a longer answer, but what are the consequences? It sounds like such a great deal that I have hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I file for bankruptcy, it goes away, and I start fresh. Is there a downside to this? My, my credit report or something? Well, you have a, obviously, if you file for bankruptcy, your credit scores go down, so that can hamper your ability uh, if you get on back on track to buy a house within a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. It has, um, if you're trying to get credit cards, a loan for an automobile, a bankruptcy filing would impact that. So, I mean, you are taking, yes, you're cleaning, wiping the slate clean, but in essence, there, people are more skeptical to lend you money, so you may not be able to afford the Mercedes now that you've got a you know a five hundred thousand dollar job, but you just had bankruptcy discharge six months ago. Right. Great, but the likelihood of you coming back, you know, now they might not be able to extend you the credit for that reason. So they your might credit not be score able goes to give down. Give you the mortgage for that reason. It stays on your report for ten years. Okay. Right. Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks I for having appreciate me. Appreciate it, Susan. Thank, thank you, you, Dan. It was a pleasure. It. And thank you for tuning in to Law Talk today. I'm Dan Agatino, your host.